Hello, this is my video on glycolysis, glycolysis in a nutshell. I am making this video for myself primarily because I have used so many mnemonics about glycolysis from around the internet. I've made a few myself and I just want them all in one place so I can review them quickly and easily. And if I learned it once this way, hopefully I can learn it like this again. So, if it helps anybody else, that's great. So I remember glycolysis with <clears throat> these mnemonics. Um, I'll tell you what they make, how they make sense and what all these symbols mean as we go through. But I remember glycolysis with a story about a little boy named George. This is George. He has one weird eye. There we go. George is a prince. He's not a very happy prince. He likes pirates and food. And he doesn't like being told what to do. And that's all really relevant to glycolysis. I'll tell you in a second. So, in this story, George is at a banquet and he wants to get some food. And, he, you know, he wants to be first up to the plate. So, he runs up to the table, tries to grab a turkey leg or something, and somebody comes out of nowhere and tells him this phrase, this first phrase. Girls get food first, dear George. Boys prepare plates for their pretty princesses. Now, this phrase is going to represent the steps of glycolysis. That's one more time. Girls get food first, dear George. Boys prepare plates for their pretty princesses. Now, George, we know a thing or two about George. He gets a little upset. He doesn't like being told what to do. So he's going to have a little daydream about some pirates because he loves pirates, which brings us to our second phrase, which represents the enzymes of glycolysis. These are the enzymes, or this is, this is the, the phrase that he thinks of. Hungry pirates picked all the greatest pickled pumpkins ever picked. So one more time. Hungry pirates picked all the greatest pickled pumpkins ever picked. Now, someone else came up with this mnemonic, and it is genius, and I will talk about how smart it is at the very end. But first, let's go over this mnemonic, the steps of glycolysis, um, and what all those symbols mean. So, girls get food first, dear George, boys prepare plates for their pretty princesses. Now, I put a slash between these two Fs and a slash between those right there. Why? Because this is where energy is being used, the end is where energy is being produced, in the middle is where everything is splitting up into two, meaning in the production line, you're going to get two times of everything. This is also a good way to make sure that you've remembered the mnemonic correctly, because there are three, three, and five, giving you a total of 11 of these uh, steps. Great. So now, if energy is being used and produced, where is that happening? That's where we're going to draw some O's. So ATP will be represented by circles, and I'm not going to tell you where it goes in or out, because if you know that it's used here and produced here, that'll make sense. So ATP, uh, those first two steps, then right after this B, and then at the very end over here. Um, over here it's being used, over here it's being produced. Now, what are our rate limiting steps? Those will be represented by stars. So we have a star here in that circle, a star here, and then a star here. Those should be the first the second and the seventh steps. Those are our regulatory steps. Makes sense? Fantastic. Now we're almost done. We put an N on top of this stick right there and an H right here. Now why is that? This N represents NAD plus going to NADH and while we're thinking about H's we'll just slap an H right here which means this is H2O which leaves in the production of phosphoenol pyruv uh, yeah, phosphoenol pyruvate right here. So H2O is leaving right there. Um, in fact, you can draw a little arrow here if you want. Just remember that H2O is leaving. So this is what it means, all those symbols that we just talked about. Now let's go through one more time, and I'll show you how I draw it. Because now that you know what the symbols mean, it's actually drawn a little bit differently. So girls get food first. Dear George, boys prepare plates for their pretty princesses. We do a slash there, we do a slash there. Now how I actually start drawing this is I do O and then N because I remember on, right? O, N. Um, and then I have to come up with where my other O's go. Even though they're not O's, they're just circles. One between the G's, one after the B, and one at the very end. Now my stars, star there, star there, star there, and then, oh yeah, while well, we're over here, let's just slap an H. Because N-A-D-H, okay, yeah, let's put an H there, sweet. So now we know all of our steps. We know our regulatory steps. We know NADH here, and we know the ATP is used in these two places, and it is produced right here and right here. So those are the steps of glycolysis. Now, let's go to uh, George's second little story about hungry pirates picked 
all the greatest pickled pumpkins ever picked. Now, these are the enzymes of glycolysis. Should have 10. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Great. So now we have the 10 enzymes. Um, and then we have some circles around here. So what do these circles represent? One, there, there, and there. These circles represent where ATP is being produced and where ATP is being used. Remember how we use circles in the other mnemonic? That is because these also are circled for ATP production. So how do I remember where those go? Those go on the first, the last, and then the second P and the first P. So it's kind of like you make a sandwich. Let's do that one more time. You have first, last, and then the two P's that are closest to each other. That is where the ATP is being produced. Now I said this was genius, and why is it genius? I will tell you. There are so many P's, how do you know what type of enzyme it is? We have isomerases, mutases, and kinases. Well, the person who came up with this picked these words very specifically because they represent what type of uh, enzyme it actually is. So pyrates, P-I, is going to be an isomerase. And then anything that has to do with pickled or picked is, even though it has a P-I, it also has a K right there. So we're going to rely on that K to remember that it's kinase. So hungry pirates, isomerase, picked kinase, all the greatest pickled kinase, pumpkins ever picked kinase. Now what about this pumpkins? That M sound in the pumpkin is for the mutase. So now we have hungry pirates picked, all the greatest pickled pumpkins ever picked. Isomerases, kinases, mutases, and kinase. How cool is that? So, let's bring it all together one more time, everything we need to know about glycolysis. We think about George, he wants to go get some food. Someone tells him, girls get food first. Dear George, boys prepare plates for their pretty princesses. And then George starts daydreaming about hungry pirates picked all the greatest pickled pumpkins ever picked. And now we're going to start slashing some stuff. Slashes, O, N. So those O's represent where ATP is being used or produced. It's being used over here, produced over here. And then we put our stars for regulatory steps. Star, 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 regulatory steps. And then that H right there for water leaving. Okay? Now we have our steps where ATP is produced on these enzymes. The first, the last, and then the two P's that are closest to each other. The pirates is an isomerase. K's, the pickled is kinase, all the greatest pickled kinase, pumpkins, mutase, ever picked kinase. Sweet. So if you want to know what all these things represent, go through and look at a graph or look at, look at one of the charts and it'll all make sense. But this will help you eliminate answer choices and get a broad picture of everything about glycolysis. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been glycolysis, glycolysis in a nutshell. Hope you'd enjoyed it. Uh, let me know if I got anything super, super wrong.